Hello everyone. Welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSE English. In today's part of NCERT Marathon Series, we'll continue with Class 11th NCERT, Indian Constitution at Work. So friends, in previous part 1, we have started basic information like constitution why we need the constitution and what was the procedure like we talked about constituent assembly and all so in today's lecture we'll continue with previous that is class 11th ncrt itself before going to start today's session it's my pleasure to welcome you all on an academy India's largest learning platform where you will get unlimited access for live and recorded classes along with structured courses. Yes, those aspirants are pursuing their graduation or after their 12th examination planning to start their preparation, they can go with an academy's iconic subscription. Now, what is iconic subscription and why I am suggesting iconic subscri subscription? to fresher ca candidates. So friends, here you will get all the features of our plus courses like live classes, weekly test, structured courses and unlimited access. Along with that, you will get additional like personal guidance, study material and planner, test analysis and expert guidelines. So this will boost up your preparation for UPSC CSE. It's me, Rishikesh Shinanda, guiding UPSC aspirants from last 8 years. You can follow me on Unacademy and you can join our Telegram group using this link. So friends, Unacademy is providing 4 in 1 offer for all, all aspirants, which means minimum you have to go with 1 year subscription. Then. You will get printed notes worth rupees 10,000 absolutely free. We have mega subscription offer and chase your dream with an academy platform where we are assisting you financially. That is, we are providing loan facilities and 10% discount using referral code RBL line. So, this is limited period offer. Hurry up and enroll yourself for four in one offer. Now friends, this mega subscription offer where you can use code RBI Life. Yes, in this you will get two. When you will opt for one year course, you will get validity till next preliminary examination that is 2022. Yes. So under this you will get guaranteed subscription till 31st July 2022. So hurry up, this offer is applicable on General Studies Iconic Combo and Optional Subscription. And along with that, you will get books like 20 book sets. Yes, 20 books created by UPSC experts absolutely free with minimum one year subscription. These are the paid courses available on our platform plus an Iconic subscription and combo subscription for general studies and optional courses. Here you can use referral code RBI Life to get 10% discount. And in com combo courses, you have option to choose one year, two year and three year subscription plan. These are the new batches starting from 5th May. So you can join this one year, two year and NCRD batches. Yes, we are providing free test series for all aspirants. So here friends, you can unlock the test using code RBI Life. So you can boost up your preparation with an academy free test series. And an academy combat for all subscribers or aspirants, which means those aspirants are looking for any type of scholarship test. We are conducting an academic combat every Sunday morning 11 am. 
Now you can unlock the combat using code RBI Life, and this combat is available in Hindi medium also. Yes, so we'll continue with our Indian Constitution at work. So friends, here is the preamble. I hope everyone aware about preamble of our constitution. We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular democratic republic, and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity and equality to promote among them all. Fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation and in our constituent assembly this 26th day of November 1949 to hereby adopt in act and give to ourselves this constitution. So I hope everyone aware about this our preamble and most of you have learned about this features of the preamble in our school and higher education itself. Now we have covered the constitution why and how. Now today we will start with rights in the Indian constitution. We will start rights in the Indian constitution. So friends these are the fundamental duties which is mentioned in part 4a article 51a in our constitution talks about fundamental duties. So just have a look. Let's have a look on fundamental duties. Yes. So we'll start today's chapter that is rights in the Indian Constitution. In earlier chapter we talked about the need of constitution, why and how. Under that heading we have covered various instances or the stories where we covered the need of constitution. Now, a constitution is not only about the composition of various organs of government and the relations among them. So, as we studied earlier, the constitution is a document that sets limits on the powers, powers of the government and ensures a democratic system in which all persons enjoy certain rights. Now, in this chapter we will study the fundamental rights contained in the Indian Constitution. Yes, so part 3 of the Constitution of India lists the fundamental rights and also mentions the limits on these rights. So, in the past six decades, the scope of rights has changed and in some aspects expanded. So after covering this chapter, we would know what are the various fundamental rights listed in the constitution of India, how these rights are protected, what role the judiciary has played in protecting and interpreting these rights and what is the difference between the fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy. Now we'll see the important rights. Yes, hurry up friends, please share the link. We'll start with the importance rights.
So in 1982, during the construct construction work for Asian Games, the government engaged a few contractors. Now, we'll start with small example. So here, you will understand the importance of rights. So, in 1982, during the construction of Asian Games, the government engaged a few contractors. These contractors employed a large number of very poor construction workers from different parts of the country to build the flyovers and stadiums. These workers were kept in poor working conditions and were paid less than the minimum wages decided by the government. Now, a team of social scientists studied their poor condition and petitioned the Supreme Court. So, they argued that employing a person to work for less than the minimum prescribed wage amount to beggar or forced labor, which is violation of the fundamental right against exploitation. The court accepted this plea and directed the government to ensure that thousands of workers get the prescribed wages for their work. Now, Machil Lalum was 23 when he was arrested and a resident of Chuburi village of Morigao district of Assam. Now, next event. So, in first event of 1982 Asian game, construction of stadiums and flyovers, where the court accepted the plea and directed the government to ensure that thousands of workers get the prescribed wages for their work. Now, second event or example we can say that Machal Lalum was 23 when he arrested a resident of Chuburi village of Morigao district of Assam. So Machal was charged of causing grievous injuries. He was found mentally too unstable to stand trial and was sent as a trial to Lokpriya Gopinath Bardoli Mental Hospital in Tejpur for treatment. Now, Machal was treated successfully and doctors wrote twice to jail authorities in 1967 and 1996 that he was fit to stand trial, but no one paid any attention. So, Michal Lalung remained in judicial custody. Now see, Machal Lalu was released in July 2005. He was 77 then. Now understand, he was arrested at the age of 23 and after a long battle of, we can say, he released in July 2005, that is, he was 77. So he spent 52 years under custody, judicial custody during which his case never came up for hearing. Now he was freed when a team of appointed by National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, intervented after an inspection of under trial in the states, in the state. Yes, so Ram Kumar we are covering up now. We are continuing our marathon session for class 11 NCRT. So today we will talk about fundamental rights. Yes, rights in the Indian constitution we will discuss. Here we have covered one Example now, second example we are talking about. So, just I'll summarize after completion of this example. So, Michael's entire life was wasted because a proper trial against him never took place. And our con constitution gives every citizen the right to life and liberty. This means that every citizen must also have the right to fair and speedy trial. And Michael's case shows what happens when rights granted by constitution are not available in practice. 
So in the case of first instance also there was violation of rights provided the constitution but it was challenged in the court and as a result workers could get what was due to them in the form of their rightful wages. So the constitutional guarantee of the right against exploitation ensured justice to these workers. Now we have covered two examples. First example of in 1982 during the construction work for Asian Games the government engaged a few contractors. Now contractors employed a large number of very poor construction workers from different parts of the country to build flyovers and stadiums. Now during the construction work the workers were kept in poor working conditions and were paid less than the minimum wages decided by the government. So what happened after that? A team of social scientists studied their poor condition and petitioned the Supreme Court where they argued that employing a person to work for less than the minimum prescribed wage yes wage amounts to bigger or forced labor which is a violation of the fundamental right against exploitation and after that court intervened and then decided yes the court accepted the plea and then directed the government to ensure that thousands of workers get the prescribed wages of their work. So this is the first case of construction workers during Asian game construction plans. Now, and after that, second example from Assam, where a youth, age of 23, arrested by the authorities and he was charged of causing grievous injuries. So what happened? That person was in judicial custody till the age of 77 which means he spent 52 years under custody and during which his case never came for hearing. Now he was faced, yes he was freed when a team of appointed by National Human Rights Commission intervened and after an inspection of under trials in the state. So how these are the two examples are talked about the rights like right to life and liberty in second example and in first example where which talked about the fundamental right against exploitation. Now after that we will see bill of right. Yes bill of rights. So both these examples 
show the importance of having rights and of the actual implementation of these rights so democracy must ensure that individuals have certain rights and that the government will always recognize these rights yes therefore it is often a practice in most democratic countries to list the rights of the citizen in the constitution itself such a list of rights mentioned and protected by the constitution is called the bills of rights so a bill of rights prohibits government from thus acting against the rights of the individuals and ensure a remedy in case of their violation of these rights so as we have learned about two examples which are the importance of having rights and of the actual implementation of these rights so when we are talking about democracy which a democracy system must ensure that individual have certain rights and that the government will always recognize these rights so as we have discussed in our previous session how democracy system is good comparatively to monarch and other one party system yes now so a bill of rights which prohibits government from this acting against the rights of the individuals and ensure a remedy in case there is a violation of these rights of individuals now so from whom does the constitution protect the rights of the individual and the rights of a person may be threatened by another person or private organization so in such a situation the individual will need the protection of the government it is necessary that the government is bound to protect the rights of the individual and on the other hand the organs of the government that is the legislature executive bureaucracy or even the judiciary in the course of their functioning may violate the rights of the person yes so the constitution is talked about all these remedies and ensure that a person or citizen will enjoy their rights in democratic system now we we'll see the fundamental rights in the indian constitution yes friends so during our freedom struggle the leaders of the freedom movement had realized the importance of rights and demanded that the british rulers should respect rights of the people the motilal nehru committee had demanded a bill of rights as for back in 1928 so it was therefore natural that when india become independent and the constitution was being prepared there were no two opinions on the inclusion and protection of rights in the constitution so the constitution listed 
the rights that would be specially protected which call them fundamental rights the constitution listed the rights that would be specially protected and call them fundamental rights now so we'll see the relevance so friends as we know in freedom struggle there are leaders of the freedom movement has realized the importance of rights when the during the regime of british they always suppressed these movements and encroached the individual rights so the freedom movement leaders always demanding the rights of the people and when britishers was violating these rights they always agitated against them now there was motilal nehru committee Yes, the Motilal Nehru Committee had demanded a Bill of Rights as far back in 1928, which means before independence, the citizens of India talked about these rights. Now, after the ending the regime of Britishers through Constituent Assembly, we started constructing our Constitution. Yes, which we were making Constitution. so there were two opinions on the inclusion and protection of rights in the constitution so where the constitution listed the rights the specially protected are called fundamental rights now the world fundamental suggest these rights are so important that the constitution has separately listed them and made special provisions for their protection now the fundamental rights are so important and the constitution itself ensures that they are not violated by the government which means fundamental rights are different from other rights available to us and why ordinary legal rights are protected and enforced by ordinary law fundamental rights are protected and guaranteed by the constitution of the country so ordinary rights may be changed by the legislature by ordinary processes of law making but a fundamental right may only be changed by amending the constitution itself so beside this no organ of the government can act in a manner that violates them which means fundamental rights are basic rights or important rights so no any machinery of government violate these laws or rights so in this chapter we will cover like judiciary has the powers and responsibility to protect the fundamental rights from violations by actions of the government executive as well as legislative actions can be declared illegal by the judiciary if these violate the fundamental rights and restrict them in an unreasonable manner yes fundamental rights are not absolute or unlimited rights so government can put reasonable restrictions on the exercise of fundamental rights so first we'll see right to equality now we'll see the two conditions so understand friends these are the these are imaginary situations but similar things do happen and can happen so do we think they involve violation of fundamental rights now we'll see the situations suresh kumar 
is visiting his village. He is accompanied by one of his friends. They decided to have a cup of tea at the village roadside hotel. Then the shopkeeper knew Sudesh Kumar but asked the name of his friend to know his caste. After this, the shopkeeper served tea to Sudesh Kumar in nice mug while his friend was given tea and earthen cup because he was Dalit. Yes, the story of Sudesh Kumar is visiting his village with his friend. So the discrimination we can say by the owner of hotel on the ground of caste. Now, an order to serve to four newsletters of television. Yes, an order. Next situation is an order is served to four newsletters of a television channel that they would no longer read the news on screen. They all are women. The reason given is that they are above the age of 45. Two male newsreaders about the same age are not barred from presenting the news. Now, see the two examples. Example of Swadesh Kumar and the story of news anchors. So these are the examples of clear discrimination. So in one instance, the discrimination is based on caste and in another, which is based on gender. So what we think that such discrimination is justified? Obviously not. So right to equality tries to do away with such and other discriminations. So it provides for equal access to public places like shops, hotels, places of entertainment, wells, bathing guards and places of worship. So there cannot be any discrimination in this access on the grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth. It also prohibits any discrimination in public employment on any of the above mentioned basis. So this part right, this right is very important because of our society did not practice equal access in the past. The practice of untouchability is one of the crudest manifestation of inequality. Yes friends, from our school or in college curriculum we have learned about the untouchability. We have heard the stories of untouchability throughout the world. So the practice of untouchability is one of the crudest manifestations of inequality. So this has been abolished under the right to equality and the same right also provides that the state shall confer no title on a person except those who excel themselves in military or academic field. Thus, right to equality strive to make India a true democracy by ensuring a sense of equality, sense of equality of dignity and status among all citizens. Now, you see the Article 16, Clause 4. Nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any provision for the reservation of appointments or posts in favor of any backward classes of citizens, which is the opinion of the state and is not adequately represented in the services under the state. So Article 16.4 which talked about Nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any provision for the reservation of appointments or post in favor of any backward class of citizens, which in the opinion of the state so is not adequately represented in services under the state.
so constitution of india part 3 fundamental rights like right to equality equality before law equal protection of laws prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth equal access to shops hotels wells tanks bathing arts roads etc equality of opportunity in public employment abolition of untouchability abolition of titles then right to freedom Right to freedom is talk about protection of right to freedom of speech and expression. Right to freedom for the assemble peacefully, form association and unions, move freely throughout the territory of India, resides and settle in any part of India, practice any profession or to carry on the occupation, trade or business. Protection in respect of conviction for offences, right to life and personal liberty, right to education, protection against arrest and detention in certain cases, right against exploitation, then prohibition of Rights against exploitation under this prohibition of traffic in human beings and forced labor, labor, prohibition of employment of children in hazardous jobs, right to freedom of religion, freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion, Freedom to manage religious affairs, freedom to pay taxes for promotion of any particular re religion, freedom to attend religious instruction or worship in certain educational institutions, cultural and educational rights, protection of language, culture of minorities, right of minorities to establish educational institutions, right to constitutional remedies right to move the courts to issue directions, orders, reads for enforcement of rights. So these are the fundamental rights under the part 3 of the constitution of India. We will learn all these rights one by one in our this chapter itself now so friends have you read the preamble to our constitution yes we have covered initially of this session itself now how does it describe equality yes you will find that the preamble mentions two things about equality equality of status and equality of opportunity Yes. So, equality of status and equality of opportunity. So, equality of opportunity means that all sections of this society enjoy equal opportunities 
but in a society where there are various kinds of social inequalities what does equal opportunity mean so the constitution clarifies that the government can implement special schemes or measures for improving the countries of the certain sections of society children women and the socially and educationally backward classes so already we have heard about reservations in jobs and in admissions so we would have wondered why there are reservations if we follow the principle of equality in fact article 16 clause 4 of the constitution explicitly clarifies that a policy like reservation will not be seen as a violation of right to equality so if we see the spirit of the constitution this is required for the fulfillment of the right to equality of opportunity yes so article 21 which described as which deals with the production of life yes the production of life and personal liberty so no person shall be no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law so article 21 of our constitution talked about protection of life and personal liberty so no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law now we'll see right to freedom so equality and freedom or liberty are the two rights are the two rights that are most essential to a democracy it is not possible to think of one without thinking of the other so liberty means freedom of thought expression and action and however it does not mean freedom to do anything that one desires or likes so if that were to be permitted then a large number of people will not be able to enjoy their freedom therefore freedoms are defined in a such a manner that every person will enjoy her freedom without enjoy his or her freedom without threatening freedom of others and without endangering the law and order situation now friends if we are talking about right to freedom so equality and freedom or liberty are the two rights that are most is essential to a democracy so the liberty means freedom of thought expression and action and it does not mean freedom to do anything that one desires or likes which means it under this right to freedom this is not like any person can do whatever he likes which means encroachment of others rights or disturbing law and order this is not the under the right to freedom so we can say a right to freedom with particular or some restrictions yes now next is right to life and personal liberty after right to freedom right to life and personal liberty 
So the foremost right among rights to freedom is the right to life and personal liberty. So no citizen can be denied his or her life except by procedure as let down under the law. Now, similarly, no one can be denied his or her personal liberty. That means no one can be arrested without being told the grounds for such an arrest So, if arrested, the person has the right to defend himself by lawyer of his choice. Yes, also it is mandatory for the police to take that person to the nearest magistrate within 24 hours. And the magistrate who is not part of the police will decide whether the arrest is justified or not. Now understand how our constitution is providing right to life and personal liberty. So that's why we have discussed why democracy system is important where person can enjoy various rights. So right to life and personal liberty. So no citizen can be denied his or her life except the by procedure as laid down under the law. So the right is not just confined to guarantee against taking away of an individual's life, but the right has wider application, which means various judgments of Supreme Court has expanded the scope of this right that is right to life and personal liberty. So this expanded part like right to live with human dignity free from exploitation. The court has held that right to shelter and livelihood is also included in the right to life because no person can live without the means of living that is a means of livelihood. So, in various judgments, Supreme Court extended the extended the justification of this right, that is right to life and personal liberty, where The court has ruled that right to life and personal liberty, which includes right to live with human dignity free from exploitation. Yes. So right to life and personal liberty. So originally, now next is preventive detention. So I hope everyone aware about detention. Now we'll see the preventive detention. So ordinarily, ordinarily, a person would be arrested after he or she has reportedly committed some offense. However, 
there are exceptions to this and sometimes a person can be arrested simply out of an apprehension that he or she is likely to engage in unlawful activity or imprisoned for some time without following the above mentioned procedure now this is known as preventive detention so when a person can be arrested simply out of an apprehension that he or she is likely to engage in unlawful activity and imprisoned for some time without following the mentioned procedure so which is called preventive detention it means that if the government feels that a person can be a threat to law and order or to the peace and security of the nation it can be detained or arrest that person so this preventive detention can be extended only for 3 months and after 3 months such a case is brought before an advisory board for review yes so on the face of it preventive detention which looks like an effective tool in the hands of the government to deal with anti social elements or subversives but its provision has often been misused by the government many people think that there must be greater safeguards in this law so that it may not be misused against people for reasons other than that which are really justified so in fact there is a clear tension between right to life and personal liberty and the provision for preventive detention yes preventive det det detention which looks like an effective tool in the hands of the government to deal with anti social elements but this provision has often been misused by the government and many people think that there must be greater safeguards in this law so that it may not be misused against people for reasons other than that which are really justified so right to life and personal liberty preventive detention now we'll see other freedoms so we can see that under the right to freedom there are some other rights as well these rights however are not absolute so each of the each of these is subject to restrictions imposed by the government for example right to freedom of speech and expression is subject to restrictions such as public order peace modality etc so the right to freedom of speech and expression is subject to restrictions such as public order peace and mortality correction modality not mortality i'm just correcting the sentence and friends right to freedom of speech and expression is subject to restrictions such as public order peace and morality now freedom to assemble to is to be exercised peacefully and without arms so the government may impose restrictions in certain areas declaring the assembly of five or more persons as unlawful so such a pass can be easily misused by the administration and the genuine protest against an act or policy of government by the people may be denied permission so however if the people are aware and vigilant in regard to their rights and choose to protest against such acts of administration such misuse becomes rare now in the constituent assembly itself some members had expressed their 
dissatisfaction of, about restrictions on rights. Yes. Now, then we'll see the rights of accused. Before that, one of the small story, like you know, small sayings printed on these NCRDs. So I feel that, yes, these are the words by Somnath Lahiri. I feel that many of these fundamental rights have been framed from the point of view of a police constable. You will find that very minimum rights have been considered and are almost invariably followed by a provision, proviso. So almost every article is followed by a proviso with which takes away the right almost completely. And what should be our con conception of fundamental rights? We want to incorporate everyone of those rights which our people want to get. Now, these are the constituent assembly discussions we can say. Now, we'll see, discuss rights of accused. So our constitution ensures that persons accused of various offenses would also get sufficient protection. We often think to believe that anyone who is charged with some offense is guilty and however no one is guilty unless the court has found that person guilty of an offense. So it is also necessary that a person accused of any crime should get adequate opportunity to defend herself or himself. To ensure a fair trial in courts, the constitution has provided three rights, which means no person would be punished for the same offense more than once no law shall declare any action as illegal from a back debt and no person shall be asked to give evidence against himself or herself. Now, right against exploitation. In our country, there are millions of people who are underprivileged and deprived. They may be subjected to exploitation by their fellow human beings. So one such form of exploitation in our country has been beggared or forced labor without payment. So another closely related form of exploitation is buying and selling of human beings and using them as slaves. So both of these are prohibited under the constitution. Forced labor was imposed by landlords, moneylenders, and other wealthy persons in the past. Some form of bonded labor still continues in the country, especially in brick clean work. So it has now been declared a crime and it is punishable. So there are millions of people. who are underprivileged and deprived. So it's in, like we can say tradition in society, in the world's context where wealthy people, or rich people like landlords, money lenders, 
was forced labor yes imposed forced labor on underprivileged and marginalized sec section of the society now see here is the picture is talked about a small child is doing work so the constitution is also forbids employment of children below the age of 14 years in dangerous jobs like factories and mines with child labor being made illegal and right to yes being illegal and right to education becoming a fundamental right for children and this right against exploitation has become more meaningful now the right to freedom of religion yes so according to our constitution everyone enjoys the right to follow the religion of his or her choice so the freedom is considered as a hallmark of democracy historically there were rulers and emperors in different parts of the world who did not allow residents of their countries to enjoy the right to freedom of religion which means persons following a religion different from that of the ruler were either persecuted or forced to convert to the official religion of the rulers and therefore democracy has always incorporated the freedom to follow the religion of one's choice as one of its basic principles which means system of democracy ensures right to freedom of religion to every citizen then freedom of faith and worship so in india everyone is free to choose a religion and practice practice that religion so freedom of religion also includes the freedom of conscience and this means that a person may choose any religion or may choose not to follow any religion yes freedom of religion which includes the freedom of profess follow and propagate any religion freedom of religion is subject to certain limitations the government can impose restrictions on the practice of freedom of religion in order to protect public order morality and health this means that the freedom of religion is not an unlimited right the government can interface in religions yes government can interfere in religious matters for rooting out certain social evils for example in the past the government has taken steps banning practices like sati bigamy and human sacrifice so such a restrictions cannot be opposed into the name of interference of interference in right to freedom of religion the limitations on the right to freedom of religion which always produce tensions between followers of various religions and the government when the government seeks to restrict some activities of any religious group people of that religion feel that this is interference in their religion now there are various reasons behind that the government feels that or there are any links between the law and order process
then government seeks to restrict the some activities so it's like that freedom of religion becomes a matter of political controversy for yet another reason now for constitution has guaranteed the right to propagate one's religion this includes which persuading people to convert from one religion to another and however some people recent con conversions on the ground that these are based on intimidation or inducement the constitution does not allow forcible conver conversions it only gives us the right to spread information about our religion and thus attract others to it equality of all religions next is equality of all religions so being a country which is home to several religions it is necessary that the government must extend equal treatment to different religions negatively it means that government will not favor any particular religion so india does not have any official religion we don't have to belong to any particular religion in order to be a prime minister or president or judge or any other public official so we have also seen that under the right to equality there is a guarantee that government will not discriminate on the basis of religion in giving employment so the institutions run by the state will not preach any religion or give religious education nor will they favor persons of any religion so the objectives of these provisions is to sustain and nurture the principle of secularism now equality of religion after that we we'll see cultural and educational rights so when we talk to the indian society the image of diversity comes before our minds india is not made up of a monolithic society we are a society that has vast diversity in such a society that is full of diversity there would be social sections which are small in numbers compared to some other groups so if a group is in minority will it have to adopt the culture of the majority no our constitution believes that diversity is our strength the diversity is our strength and therefore one of the fundamental rights is the right of minorities to maintain their culture this minority status is not dependent only upon religion linguistic and cultural minorities are also included in this provision minorities are groups that have common language or religion and in particular part of the country or in the country as a whole they are outnumbered by some other social section such communities have a culture language and a script of their own and have the right to conserve and develop this cultural and educational rights so all minorities like religious or linguistic can set up their own educational institutions 
by doing so they can preserve and develop their own culture and the government will not while granting aid to educational institution discriminate against any educate any educational institution on the basis of or on the basis that is under the management of minority community now there is one cutting studies now see a constituent assembly discussion by sardar hukum singh a heavy responsibility would be cast on the majority to see that in fact the minorities feel secure minorities feel secure the only safety for the minorities lies in a secular state it pays them to be nationalists the majority community should not vote of their national outlook they should try to place themselves in the position of the minorities and try to appreciate their fears so all demands for safeguards are the products of those fears that the minorities have in their minds and as regards the language their script and also about the services so these are the lines by sardar hukum singh in constituent assembly discussions and debates now after that we'll see right to constitutional remedies so one would agree that our constitution contains a very impressive list of fundamental rights but merely writing down a list of rights is not enough there has to be a way through which they could be realized in practice and defended against any attack on these rights so right to constitutional remedies is the means through which this is to be achieved so dr ambedkar considered the right to constitutional remedies as heart and soul of the constitution so it is so because this right gives a citizen the right to approach to high court or the supreme court to get n to get any of the fundamental rights restored in case of their violation the supreme court and the high courts can issue orders and give directives to the government for the enforcement of rights the courts can issue very special orders which known as writs so i hope everyone aware about this writs just have a look first it hibis corpus so a writ of hibis corpus means that the court orders that the arrested person should be presented before it and it can also order to set free an arrested person if the manner on grounds of arrest are not lawful or satisfactory so hibis corpus second writ is mandamus so this writ is issued when the court finds that a particular office holder is not doing legal duty and thereby is infringing on the right of an individual next is prohibition this writ is issued by a higher court when a lower court has considered a case going beyond its jurisdiction prohibition then co warrantum if the court finds 
that a person is holding office but is not entitled to hold that office so it issues the writ of co warranto and restricts that person from acting as an office holder and after that certiorari certiorari under this writ the court orders a lower court or another authority to transfer a matter pending before it to the higher authority or court certiorari so habeas corpus mandamus prohibition co warranto and certiorari these are the rights so rights to constitutional remedies so apart from judicial many other mechanisms have been created in later years for the protection of rights so we have heard about the national commission of on minorities the national commission on women national commission on scheduled castes so these institutions protect the rights of women minorities or dalits so beside the national human rights commission has also been established by law to protect the fundamental and other kinds of rights so we see national human rights commission so the real test of the rights given by any constitution now we'll see national human rights commission nhrc the real test of the rights given by any constitution in their actual implementation the poor illiterate and the deprived sections of the society must be able to exercise their rights independent organizations like people's union for civil liberties ucl or people's union for democratic rights pudr have been working as watchdogs against the violation of rights in this background the government has established in 1993 an institution the national human rights commission yes the national human rights commission is composed of a former chief justice of the supreme court of india a former judge of the supreme court or a former chief justice of a high court and to other members who have knowledge and practical experience in matters relating to human rights so the commission's function include inquiry at its own initiative or on a petition presented to it by a victim into complaint of violation of human rights so visit to jails to study the condition of these the inmates so undertaking and promoting research in the fields of human rights yes undertaking the promoting research and the human rights etc the commission receives complaints in thousands every year these relate to custodial death custodial rape this appearances police excesses failure in taking actions indignity to women etc so its most significant intervention interventions has been on disappeared youth in punjab and investigation and trial of gujarat right cases where its interventions proved effective so the human rights commission does not have the power of prosecution but it can merely make recommendations to the government or recommend to the courts to initiate proceedings based on the inquiry that it conducts so friends this is about national human rights commission so friends in today's part 2 is comparatively small than other parts so we'll continue 
this ncrd in our next part just have a recap what we have covered we talked about rights in the indian constitution yes introduction we have covered then importance of rights where we have covered two examples like examples of 1982 asian games construction workers issue and then a story of machal lalu from assam so then we have discussed the need of rights so bill of rights we have discussed fundamental right fundamental rights in the indian constitution right to equality we have discussed about article 16 clause 4 article 21 then we have discussed about right to freedom right to life and personal liberty preventive detention other freedoms right of accused right against exploitation right to freedom of religion freedom of faith and worship equality of all religions cultural and educational rights right to constitutional remedies and then human rights commission so friends we'll continue this ncrd in the next part so very soon we will announce this schedule for next part so do not forget to join our telegram group where we will update about next schedule of this ncrd class 11 so till the time friends keep studying keep revising see in the next lecture till the time stay safe stay home and please like share like share and subscribe an academy videos do not forget to watch our videos for crash course prelims 2021 inspire so that's it for today take care thank